What's up guys, my name is Pi, welcome to SR Lounge, and uh, well, Sony has dropped a bomb on all of us yesterday with the announcement of the A7R 4 We're gonna watch the product feature, I'm gonna give you guys some thoughts, some reactions, and uh, let's see what they have for us. Alpha. Feel the hype right now. I can, the music, oh, it's good. It's like, it's building in me. I, I can feel it like deep in my loins. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Ah! Okay, this is that finger to the industry moment. This is like the, ah, y'all, Canon, Nikon, everyone else trying to catch up with your mirrorless stuff. Well, catch up to this. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, can you imagine the conversations that are happening right now at Canon and Nikon and all these other companies? Like, you've got these engineers that are just like, damn it! We, we're just trying to respond to the A7R 3 I'm putting in my two-week notice. Now, I know a lot of you are gonna be like, wonder right now, is Pi gonna switch, is Pi? Look, I'm the guy that believes there's a tool for every job, every function, and I'm just gonna use the tools that make the most sense for me for the specific job and function. I am not allied with any one particular brand, although I have preferred Canon over the last few years. But I shot on the A7R 3 and it was actually very enjoyable recently. Sixty-one megapixel. Sixty-one megapixels. Now, there's probably a lot of you that are thinking like, why the hell would you need 61 megapixels in a camera? That's just overkill. Before you go and jump on that bandwagon, let me say that yes, for the majority of people that are just taking like average pictures and like, you know, if I'm gonna shoot pictures of my kids, I'm not gonna put them in 61 megapixels. But shooting 61 megapixels does allow you a lot of different advantages. So here's some ideas. Not only, obviously, you're gonna get more detail and it's gonna turn out better in large resolution prints, especially going straight from the camera. The next thing is the ability to crop. So when you're in situations and you're shooting and maybe you take a prime lens and you don't wanna carry everything around with you, having additional resolution allows you to shoot higher resolution and essentially crop in on the lens while still getting a printable image. Now this is a big deal for not only your own personal use, but it's also awesome when it comes to commercial uses. Because for example, if I'm shooting the studio and I'm doing just fashion portraits and, and shooting a catalog, I can shoot one image for every single kind of pose and look and not have to zoom in or anything. I can take that full crop and then in post, I can crop in and still have plenty of resolution for print. So there's a ton of uses for 61 megapixels just don't go leaving it in 61 megapixel raw and take 10 frames a second of your child's soccer game. Actually, I'll probably do that. Just to say that I did it. Yeah, you would. Yeah, I would. I'm gonna say yes to their whole name of their sensor, Bion ZX, that sounds cool. Okay, now that's a big deal. So on top of the 61 megapixel resolution, they're now boasting 15 stops of dynamic range. To put it into perspective for you, if you are a Canon user with a 5D4, or any of those kind of series of cameras, you've been working with 12 to 13 uh, stops of dynamic range. 15 is a significant improvement. Now there's a couple of videos out there that are like 15 video stops of dynamic range is what the eye can see. No you're still a long ways from that. I think that's like 20 something stops of dynamic range. But 15 is fantastic and it's a market improvement, especially if you're coming from other cameras. If you're coming from the a7R 3 I think that might only be like a stop of difference, but still it's a nice improvement there. So way in the past I shot on early Sony a7Rs and the a7R 2 and I, I found it to be frustrating. Um, I recently actually shot with Lee in Puerto Rico for the challenge using the a7R 3 and I really enjoyed it. Other than the menu system, I really enjoyed what the, the camera was producing, the files, the dynamic range. So to think of that and an improved version of that is a pretty big deal. Okay, that's cool. So 
in body stabilization is a big deal. Um, and that's awesome, not only for video, but also for still shooters. So we have nice resolution, not resolution, nice stabilization. 5.76 million dot, I mean, who cares about the OLED? I got, actually that's, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be a really nice LED, but just saying. Okay, now this is interesting. First of all, it's boasting 240 megapixels in this pixel shift multi-shooting mode. Even at 4K on, um, I have this video playing at 4K on my iMac display and I'm like a couple inches away from it. I can't really see a huge difference between there. I mean, I, I do see that the shot on the right is a little bit more crisp, but clearly this is most likely gonna be a feature that's only really gonna work for landscape. Wouldn't you say, Carlo? Because it looks like it's 16 shots and it's basically putting together panoramic stitch. So your subject would have to be holding incredibly still if you're gonna have subject in the shot. Um, but still, if that does it in camera and it does it fairly quickly, that's a pretty dang cool feature for landscape and kind of cityscape photographers. Oh, see, I paused the video too quick. I can see a bigger difference now that it zoomed all the way in. That's nice. Phase detection, AF points, 74% of the image area. This is where like to see Sony already improve on what's already an amazing autofocus system, that that's gonna be cool. It's so fast, they're using a cheetah in the sample picture to demonstrate to you how fast it is. The problem is that the cheetah is just like kind of holding still, maybe walking at a very slow pace. I would highly recommend that they use a running cheetah next time to demonstrate that principle. Okay, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. Do you see that? Do you see that, the way it's tracking? It can now track animal faces. Actually, that was an update that they did a little while back. Okay, I got a friend at B&H, Abe. He loves shooting birds. And I'm sure when he saw this right now, this like little 10 picture sequence, he was like, ah, that's amazing. Like literally just like that. You guys reach out to Abe, see if that was his response. Okay, this is exactly what I mean about going into that crop view. So going into crop mode and APS-C mode, you still get 26 megapixel files, which essentially is giving you the equivalent of a zoom lens, even if you're working with primes, or if you have a zoom lens, like a, a 2470, you can essentially take 70 and go 1.6X. So get up to 100 plus millimeters, and you can still have 26 megapixels. That's, that's a big deal. Subject recognition with AI, that's cool. So basically it's telling you that the new face and eye detection is using AI to be able to see faces. And their system was already freaking good to begin with. So this is gonna be crazy. I have to say that when it comes to real-time tracking and autofocus, there isn't yet anything that's comparable to these cameras. This is incredible. I mean, I feel like it should have been a man here that was kind of doing the twirl and stuff. It kind of feels a little bit sexist. Okay, right there I'm calling bull You see how in the last sequence right there, she was dancing the opposite way, now she's looking at the rice. I mean, come on, at least there's, we have serious continuity issues Right here. I'm, I'm just saying that the photograph doesn't match the B-roll. And that's like rule number one, right? Oh, that's a big deal, Elo. So now they're bringing real-time AF for cinema. This is gonna be really interesting. It'll be crazy to see what cinema options they'll have available in this camera. Okay, this feels like there might be some buried information here. High resolution 4K movies. Full pixel readout without binning in Super 35 mode. 
Okay, but they didn't really tell us frame rates or anything like that. So I'm thinking that, because you would think that if they offered like 60p or like different, like, like higher frame rates for 4K, they would make that very visible right there on that first slide. But that being said, the quality of the video is still really good. I'm not really sure if it's gonna work for cinema needs, depending on what your frame rate needs are. Oh, that was cool. Did you see that little note? It has uh, interval recording, which I believe the previous one didn't had, had to, but we have our built-in intervalometer with time-lapse edit with imaging edge. Oh, so it doesn't, doesn't look like it's doing it in camera still. I would have loved her to do that in camera. Digital audio interface, kill your sound connection, nice. Okay. Oh, that's nice, we got the new USB 3 update. Oh no, we have USB 3.2 Gen 1. So not USB-C. That's weird. It's got two card slots. We're good to go. The internets can relax. Highly customizable buttons. Y'all need to be highly customizable because they're gonna come in a layout that's a train wreck and you're gonna have to piece it together as to what works for you. I do like that they're customizable, but I wish the menu and the ergonomics were improved. And actually, I think they might be improved. I, I saw a couple people talk about the, the grip being larger on the A7R4, so that's gonna be a big deal. Hopefully the menu will be better. Otherwise, yeah, we definitely need high customizability. All right, Carlo, what do you think? Carlo's not yet sold. No, I'm not sold yet. He's not sold yet. Here, I think this is gonna be a fantastic camera. I'm definitely gonna try it out. Um, what I love most about what this camera does is the way that it's gonna be pushing the rest of the entire industry. You've got Nikon, you've got Canon, you've got Fuji, you've got all these camera companies that are designing cameras from this perspective of, well, they used to have three to five year product cycles and Sony is cutting those product cycles down to like 18 to 24 months. That is insane. That's a completely different way of designing and a completely different way of engineering and releasing products than what these other companies are used to. And for that, it's gonna be huge. It's also just a fantastically impressive camera on its own. Um, it's gonna be a market improvement. I would say that if you already have the A7R 3 I didn't see anything in there that was like groundbreaking, I got a switch. But at the same time, like if you haven't yet gotten into the Sony mirrorless, this is gonna be a huge selling point for a lot of people. So it looks like it's coming in at a $3,500 price tag, um, which for what the camera does and for how good it is, I think is gonna be a bargain. And that's gonna be a matter of getting it in hand, trying it out. I'm personally really excited about the 15 stops of dynamic range, the 10 frames with the additional buffer so that you can shoot through sequences and capture action. And, and I'm very much excited to try out the new autofocus. Personally, I would definitely say that this is a camera that I wouldn't mind having in my toolkit. Ah, so Carlo's asking, is this more so a, a video or a still camera? Just based on the product features and what I've seen, I would definitely say that this is 80% still camera and maybe 20% video, just because we didn't see them boasting necessarily about the video features, which to me tells me that, yes, it can do 4K video, but it's not really designed for the cinematographer. But to me, that's okay. Like, why do the internets expect one camera to do every single thing? What I think they might do is with the A7S next version, I think they might make that more in tune with like cinema needs. Who knows? But it's one of those things that a lot of people complain about and I'm just like, man, this does stills incredibly well. It'll also do video, that's a great thing. You don't see, you know, like, you don't go and pick up a C300 and be like, man, this, is a, this thing takes really crappy stills. Like, who would ever do that? No, you buy that camera for the cinema side. So, I don't know. I think this is 75% still camera, 80% still camera, maybe 20%, 25% video. But still, it's a very cool camera. It's gonna be really interesting to see what it does at the industry. Uh, overall, I think what's gonna be most exciting is it's the way it's gonna push down prices of the existing cameras. You already saw Fuji actually drop and put their GFX-R on an instant sale as soon as this thing was announced. So every other camera maker is gonna have to bring down prices because they are now competing either directly or indirectly 
with the A7R, and that includes, includes the Sony lineup. So the Sony A7R three is gonna go down in price. So from the consumer side, it's fantastic. No doubt that this body is, is awesome. The main thing for me though, is gonna be the lens lineup, is what lenses are we gonna get along with this? And that's where I still feel like other manufacturers, especially Canon right now, they seem to be doing really interesting things on the lens side, which is gonna be a very, I, I think, compelling reason to either switch or stay in that Canon world because of the lenses that the RF lineup is gonna make available. So Sony's definitely winning hands down on the camera body and that system but it's going to be a really interesting battle as we go forward to see the accessories and all the other things that you know come out to these other camera makers as well as the other bodies that are going to be coming out very exciting exciting stuff all right hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys liked it please give it a thumbs up let us know what you think about these kind of initial thoughts and reactions towards product releases if you guys like them we'll do more my name is pi and i'll see you guys in the next video